They say it's really hard to pick a definitive version of A Christmas Carol. And I would make an argument for the Muppets Christmas Carol. I don't know if it's the number one best version ever. But it's probably my favorite version. At least that I've seen. I haven't seen every single version But I've seen a bunch, and this is probably my favorite. The Muppets Christmas Carol was released in 1992. It was directed by Brian Henson, the son of Jim Henson. And this was his directorial debut following the death of his father, Jim Henson. It was written by Jerry Jewell and starring Michael Caine as Ebenezer Scrooge, along with Kermit the Frog, Fozzie Bear, Gonzo the Great, Miss Piggy, Rizzo the Rat, all you know, the whole cast that we all know and love. They're all here. There is so much that makes this one of the best, and I think. A lot of it comes down to Michael Caine being Mr. Scrooge. I've seen interviews and stuff where where he was talking about how he played the role straight. Like, he didn't... You know, it's a Muppet movie. You're thinking you know, they could easily have done like an over-the-top, over-dramatic acting. But he plays it like it's any other movie. And... It's great. Like the the funny moments are funny. The the intense moments are intense. It does get emotional at times, and it's mostly due to Michael Caine's acting. He's really good. <laughs> but watching this movie, like I haven't seen this movie in a really long time. I actually forgot a lot of this, and one of the first things I noticed watching this is. The opening song, I I couldn't help noticing that, um, you know, it's Ebenezer Scrooge walking to the town with everyone singing around him. The way someone turns out and, like, the way their personality is and the way they, they out outwardly towards somebody or a community, it... You know, it can be partially due to the way that they, in turn, are treated. Now, with that being said, I I couldn't quite help noticing that he's walking through town while everyone's singing about how horrible he is. And... Yeah, I'm sure that has something to do with how horrible he is. Imagine walking through town with everyone singing that, like, you know, you're this horrible person. It's, you're not going to like them. But, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, ah, there's probably a reason he doesn't like y'all so much. Just a hunch. But, yeah, like, like I said, going back to uh, Michael Caine's acting, he is legit terrifying as Ebenezer Scrooge. Like, when he... He you know, he does the yelling. That's kind of expected for the character. But I think, like, the, the moment I was like, oh, wow, this guy is intense, is when he takes the reef and throws it at that bunny, I was like, oh, he's going all in. And there's a song about, I would say, maybe halfway through the film that I actually didn't even know existed until about a week ago because it was cut from the original movie. It's called something like like The Love is Gone or something like that. It's when uh, the, go- the Ghost of Christmas Past, ha- the, he's talking with the, you know, the girl he was in love with. I, I have always kind of noticed that that scene kind of went by really quick. It's like they they say that they say all the the stuff and like, "Oh, we're not getting married again. You said that last time and this isn't going to work out." Next scene. 
I always thought that was that was kind of quick. Well, it turns out there was supposed to be a song there, and they cut it for time. And because of that, it kind of loses a little bit of an emotional punch. I, I want they um. They added it back. If you watch it on Disney Plus, it's not the, um, the the base movie. Like if you go to hit play, it's gonna play the theatrical release. You have to go to extras, and it'll have the, you know, the full version on there. Which the only difference is it has the song, and just simply adding that song. Add so much to the story and to the movie, and like the emotional weight. I mean, because it was basically the moment when he starts to change, and it's also referenced at the end. The um, at the I was going to give a spoiler warning just now, but it's a Christmas story. Do I need to give a spoiler warning? <laughs> Um, and I'll, I should also say it is on Disney Plus. I think I already did say that though. But anyway, at the very end, when uh, Ebenezer Scrooge is sitting down with Tiny Tim and they start singing, like the love you found or whatever. I can't sing. I'm not going to try to sing. Yeah, that that is like a twist on the the song that was deleted. And now that makes a little more sense. That should not have been deleted. That song should not have been deleted. If they wanted to cut a song for time, they should have cut the Statler and Waldorf song at the beginning when they're, they're the Marleys. And it just it just seemed weird, them two singing. And I was like, oh, okay, they're doing this. That song could have been cut. And he wouldn't have lost anything. So they rather keep that song and cut the song that emotionally moves the story. It's not just moves the story along story-wise, but like adds so much more of an emotional punch. And I so I love this movie a lot, but I I could complain about about it. But it does a lot of things right. I don't want to come sit here and complain about it. It does a lot of things right, and uh, and one of them is if well, if you've seen Muppet movies in the last twenty years or so, when they do a Muppet adaptation, like Muppet Wizard of Oz or whatever, they tend to make it a little too goofy. I mean, I know it's for kids, but uh, before they would, you know, they it would be meta. But they would still tell a good story. They they would tell the story of Treasure Island, but add add something special to it. My favorite version of the Treasure Island story is Muppet Treasure Island. It's because they have their own. Their, they have the way of t- like adding their own spin to it to make it the classic story we all know. While also making it their own. And that's the case with the Muppet Christmas Carol. It's the same story. I can't spoil it. Because you already know how it ends. But. There's elements to it. That they added to it. That just adds. To it. (laughs) That was unclimatic. And I think like. One example. Throughout the, the movie. That I can give is. This is a very intense story. Like, if you've seen the Jim Carrey one, that's more accurate to the book. It's a very dark story. I'm actually surprised it's read to kids. It's considered a kid's story, even though it's like... It's 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 like the 1800s version of a Stephen King book, kind of. And so, like... That's in here. I mean, they tone it way down for the kids, but it is still kind of an intense story. So, how do they 
how what do they do they they use their unique brand of humor to lighten it up something dark will happen and then something funny will happen but not like a mood ruining silly moment like thor love and thunder where like it doesn't let the emotion set in there's like just enough of a joke that it doesn't get too dark and that that's like their own unique thing like they'll be there's a moment when they're in the school house schoolyard they're when they're in the past Ebenezer's school and it's like a character development moment for him where you, this is where he learns how to be the greedy person he ends up being and it is kind of an important scene or like it's a little intense because like the Sam the Eagle is is like telling him these things like this is the way to run a business this is how to to save money or whatever and it's kind of serious but like Gonzo and Rizzo is in the background being themselves so it's not like, too serious and it's in a good way it's not like in the modern Muppet movies where they're, they they go too far with the silliness which again there's nothing wrong with the silliness it's kind of the point I mean you're it's, it's it's literally the Muppets. But, like... They're able to... With this with stories like this, they're able to take it seriously while having fun at the same time. Speaking of which, kind of in that vein, I, I mentioned Gonzo and Rizzo. These characters work so well together and everything and I love how like they just work off each other it just adds so much and I have noticed during the opening credits it was is naming the Muppet plus the character they played and with Rizzo the Rat it just said as himself like they didn't even make up a character for him this is Rizzo being Rizzo I love how they're able to just the ever every one of these they they're meta, but they're never too meta. Like it's just the right amount. Like for example, like whenever you first meet Gonzo as Charles Dickens, he goes, "I'm Charles Dickens," and Rosa goes, "No, you're not. You're Gonzo." <laughs> oh, okay, you're you're. Whatever. And the later Rizzo's like, Gonzo! Gonzo! I I I mean I mean uh, uh Charles Dickens And so like There I there are some Muppet movies I've seen that take that a little too far, like with the meta where like there was one Muppet movie I saw where Kermit was like Oh, oh yeah, we're uh, we're reading a script. That's and uh, there's the, the the camera guy. He's just like, it's not like they were. It wasn't one of the Muppet movies. I don't remember which one. It wasn't one of the Muppet movies where they were adapting a pre-existing material like like this or Wizard of Oz or something. It was supposed to be a Muppet movie. I don't remember which one it was. There's so many. And, like, they stop the story to address the crew. And I'm like, this is... This is a little too meta. I know Muppets are always meta, but, like, this is too much. They Like, the, the whole story just came to a halt for, like, five minutes. I don't... I wish I remembered what... Which one was... I know, one of the Muppet movies, Kermit... And Miss Piggy got married at the end. And like all of the Muppet characters. Even Sesame Street and Fraggle Rock. Were in the audience. And I'm like oh yay they got married. But then like. In movies after that. They just like each other. And it's like wait wait wait. They were married. 
I saw them get married. And in that new Muppet show, I forgot what, um, I think it was this Muppets, lowercase, with the period. They, they broke up. They didn't get a divorce, they broke up. So it's like, did everyone just forget they got married? Ah, yeah. That, I never understood that, and it's... And I know it's just the Muppets, but it's always bothered me. Anyway, back to the movie. As I said at the opening of this, this is probably the best version of the Christmas Carol because it's like the it's like the mid point when it comes to intensity that is a weird way to word that sentence i thought of it as i was wording it and I, I i'm pretty sure you know what i mean like it's kind of like rephrasing what i've already said it's not too intense not too dark but also not too funny they, they balance everything out i don't i don't know what more i can say like i've seen a lot of reviews on this and I'm trying not to just repeat things others have said. Like, I don't want to just repeat what everyone else has said. But at the same time, I don't want to just be a straight-up contrarian. It's like, I I don't want to just say the opposite of what everyone's saying. I agree with all the reviews I've seen. I have yet to see anyone say, this is a terrible adaptation. Everyone seems to love this. This is a huge classic. And... Yeah. I think... If you haven't seen this movie... You should totally see it. It's on Disney+. Plus. Don't watch the base movie. I know uh, it's... Pretty... Instinctual... To just hit play. I think they should have this as an option. Where like you press play. And it has. Do you want the theatrical version? Or do you want the extended edition? That should be what happened. Because like it's kind of hidden. They released the extended edition. But it's kind of hidden in the extras. Watch that. There's like an extra two minutes. It's not... not too time constraining I don't know if that's the way to word that but anyway I am going to end this episode here I still haven't found a way to end these I think uh, sometimes I try to end the episode by saying a famous quote from the from the, the movie uh, this one there's there's a famous quote, but it's like so cringy to say it. I every year someone says it, and everyone's like, "Ugh." So instead, I'm going to end this by saying a different famous quote from the movie. Bah humbug. <laughs>